This episode of the Literary Minute is brought to you by the Lit Minute Bookmarks. Purchase your Phyllis Wheatley commemorative bookmark at estenisejohnson.org forward slash products. Hi, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of The Lit Minute with me, Professor Stephanie Johnson, also known as The Wright, W-R-I-T-E, Professor. This episode is entitled Phyllis Wheatley's Light. In recognition of March as National Women's History Month, we are honoring Phyllis Wheatley with a special contextual and contemporary reading of her renowned poem entitled On Being Brought from Africa to America. March 2018 has been an active month providing current events that are impacting and changing the fabric of our country. In response to the February 14th shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, students from various ethnicities and backgrounds joined together to protest the recurring cycles of gun violence that disrupt their learning environments. This most recent chapter of this conversation includes students challenging the notion of racial privilege and using it to build a bigger and broader platform by including figures and commentaries from the Black Lives Matter movement, which addresses the disproportionate number of questionable police shootings of unarmed black and brown victims. And this, of course, adversely impacts the life and the livelihood of black and brown communities. Not only does it address these questionable shootings, but it also addresses the lack of media coverage, giving a voice to the families of these victims, thus marginalizing both of these demographics. The March for Our Lives movement has expanded its platform to include those voices that have been marginalized, thus using their white privilege because they were given the voice in order to bring in other voices, different voices, including all voices to this most pertinent discourse. Black Lives Matter simply means that attention must be drawn to and effective action must be taken to prevent this disproportionate number of questionable police shootings of unarmed black and brown victims that end in the death or disablement of the individual. The most recent which is Stefan Clark, a young man shot 20 times in his own backyard while only holding a cell phone. The Parkland students, again, and all students leading the March for Our Lives rally, used their privilege to expand their platform and to shed light on gun violence that affects all communities. So how did we get here? Well, since America's inception, there has been white privilege and the need for blacks and people of color to attest that indeed, yes, our lives matter. This racial and social dynamic is evident as early as in the poem on being brought from Africa to America, written by Phyllis Wheatley, published in 1768. On being brought from Africa to America. Twas mercy brought me from my pagan land, taught my benighted soul to understand that there's a God, that there's a Savior too. Once I redemption neither sought nor knew. Some view our sable race with scornful eye. Their color is a diabolical dye. Remember, Christians, Negroes, black as Cain, may be refined and join the angelic train. Phyllis Wheatley is well known in history to have been the first African American to publish an entire book of poetry. In addition to this, Phyllis Wheatley is the first African American to gain international fame. Not only that, she was one of the first colonial era writers, women writers, to publish a book of poems, and she was only second to Anne Bradstreet.
A contextual reading of this poem will render insight into the multi-dimensional impact the slave trade and enslavement had on black lives that were snatched from their homeland on the continent of Africa and brought to multiple parts of the Americas. Phyllis Wheatley is said to have been born circa 1753 in West Africa near the Senegal and Gambia countries from where she was kidnapped, eventually sold into slavery, and purchased by uh, John Wheatley for his family and she resided in Boston, Massachusetts with their family. While with the Wheatleys, she served as the personal servant of Susanna Wheatley, John Wheatley's wife. The family allowed her to be educated, to be able to read and write. Phyllis became an astute studier of English, British literature, the Bible and the Christian religion, astronomy, geography, and the Latin and Greek classics. And she was so adept in her skills that she translated a version of a tale written by Ovid. Phyllis Wheatley's work was lauded by readers from all backgrounds. Slaveholders promoted her work because of its Christian characteristics and Christian beliefs, thinking that it would convince enslaved Africans to convert to their misguided interpretation of Christianity. On the other hand, abolitionists lauded her work because it was a stark example and a counter argument to arguments that said, you know, Africans and blacks could not be educated. On the contrary, Phyllis Wheatley's work was a prime example of the acumen, the intellectual acumen of Africans when allowed to be educated. Due to the influence of her London audience, Phyllis Wheatley was allowed her freedom. Um, in addition to that, after she gained her freedom, she married a man by the name of John Peters and started her family. Unfortunately, they suffered the loss of three children. It's reported that her husband abandoned her and after working as a maid and doing uh, other odd jobs, uh, Phyllis Wheatley did die in poverty. Despite this unfortunate turn of events in her life and then her death, posthumously, there were two more books of poems of Phyllis Wheatley's writing uh, that were published by John Wheatley's descendants. In addition to that, she has been immortalized in the form of a sculpture created by a Meredith Bergman that appears in the Boston's Women's Memorial in Boston, Massachusetts. On being brought from Africa to America is Wheatley's testimony on the psyche of white America with regard to blacks, Negroes, Africans. She uses Christian symbolism and duality to provide an open rebuke to the misuse of religion to oppress. In addition, she offers a subtle rebuke to the vilification of the African image in both religious and social contexts. But what is so intriguing and what is so startling is what has possibly been overlooked or forgotten for years. Her acknowledgement, yes, her acknowledgement of the presence and significance of blacks in the Bible. Her last line of the poem states, Remember Christians, Negroes, black as Cain, may be refined and join the angelic train. This line presents a series of modifiers describing Negroes as black as Cain. Black in this context can be taken both literally and symbolically. Literally, for the ethnicity of the group from which Cain descended, and figuratively, Cain, the jealous, evil sibling that killed the brother, Abel, acknowledging that sinfulness and evilness are often attributed to darkness or blackness. Which brings us back to our contemporary issues with the negative symbolism of black and the vilification of black people and their image. The same underlying attributions and negative ethnic associations persist when activists still must attest that black lives matter. When activists, today's abolitionists, if you will, still must assert that black is not bad, black is not evil, and black deserves to be treated with truth, fairness, equal rights, 
and equal justice. And especially when our youth, 15 and 16 year old students can plainly see, yes, can plainly see and acknowledge and mobilize to insert the black voice into the conversation when black, although more than relevant to the conversation, has been overlooked, marginalized, and just plain ignored. Wheatley inserted her voice into the conversation in 1768, and our youth are doing the same in 2018. Yes, still 250 years later. America, we must do better. It's long overdue. This has been Season 2, Episode 3 of The Lit Minute with me, Professor Stephanie Johnson, also known as The Right, W-R-I-T-E, Professor. Remember, reading is lit, so be lit. Hi there, are you enjoying my videos? Do you find them engaging, enriching, and mildly entertaining? If so, share me, don't keep me all to yourself. I'd love to be able to share this knowledge with not only you, but with your family and your friends. So come along with me and invite others to join us as we stay lit together. Like, share my videos, and subscribe to my YouTube page. I'll be seeing you.